Hello, so this video again is sponsored by Autodesk and in this one I'm going to try and show a um, possible workflow of how you would use the Bifrost mesh to feed back into uh, skinned mesh or something like that and I'm going to make a little, that's one thing, but also I'm going to make a blend shape um, controller for sort of look, you know, look direction in um, using Bifrost. And again, I feel like I have to keep explaining this <coughs> because when I make it, it'll look like a complicated workflow. But the point is I'm making a reusable tool. So I'll show afterwards what you would need to do if you were just using the tool itself, because there's a big difference. Um, so I've created a graph. Oh, I've already got a graph, hold on. Let me um, bring up that graph there. And I can rename that graph, so I can call that, wee, hang on, um, rename, how do I rename stuff, double click, okay, so I graph, say, um, I'll bring in the mesh of him, get rid of that, and I want to bring these in, so look left, I'll just do look left shape, first of all, so, um, oops, so first of all, I need to get the point positions of the object itself. And the if I show this look left mesh, it's basically the same, but it's just the shifted on the eye bit. So you can see if I do wireframe, actually you can't really see. Uh, but you can see there if I flip between the two, that's just like a looking left shape. And I've got these different shapes for various, um, you know, looking left, looking right, and all that sort of stuff. But I don't need to show that at the moment, I'll just hide it. So I get the point position of the beast shape, get the point position, I'll just copy and paste that, uh, of the look left shape. Then to make the delta between them, you know, the offset between them, I subtract the point position from the blend shape mesh. And then if I add it back, so, add, then set the point position. You'll see that the shape will be applied. <laughs> no, you won't. Oh, sorry, because <laughs> because I need to actually blend it back to the point position of the object itself. So I've made a Biff mesh now, sorry for that. Um, so if I, if I, um, if I just did the point position originally, it's like that. And with the shape applied, it's like that. Okay. So that's one of them. Um, And I need to make the others. So to do the others, I need to copy that bit. I'll make it into a little compound, actually, just to make it um, easier. So that's Control G. And I'll copy that, paste that there, paste it a few times. OK. And these ones are the looking left, right, up, and down. So look left, so I go look right look up and look down or loo down as I've called it there plug those in like that now I've got these four um, amounts coming out of here you know like that like that if I plug in these four deltas which I need to control and I need to control these by the rotation of this so first of all, I need to be able to bring that amount in as a um, transform, like the transform of the eye, so I can do stuff with it in here. So if I make a transform, transform, no, what's it called? Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, matrix to SRT. SRT means scale, rotation, and translation, like that. It's called quaternion, not rotation. 
but it is the rotation. It's just it's just called a quaternion. And the transform is the just general matrix which holds all those values. So if I plug that in, um, okay. So what I want to use is this quaternion value to be able to drive these um, positions. Um, sorry, these uh, different shape values. So to do that, I'm going to have to, um, if I do it on one, I have to get the um, angles of the, uh, you know, the X, Y, and Z from this. So to do that, I'm going to go quaternion to Euler, Euler, and annoyingly, that gives me radians. So I'm going to have to do radians to degrees. I don't really know what radian. Well, I know. I, yeah, I don't know much about radians. Um, but anyway, you've got the degrees there. Let me just compound that up. Control G. And I need to go and put an output on that from there to there. So you could rename this. And call it um, um, transform to degrees. Obviously, you know, I'm not using all of that transform if I go in there and just, you know, selecting one bit. So that's a compound which I could use whenever I want to do that particular thing. So, you know, it's again, a lot of what I'm showing is doing it from scratch. So it looks a lot longer and more complicated than if I was just doing it, um, you know, uh, with all of these things existing already. So like this, I could have called find um, delta or something. Um, rather than compound, compound, compound. In fact, let me do that. I'll call that that. I don't know quite where I'm going to click to make that. Okay. Find delta. Delta, fancy word for, you know, just like an off, an offset, a blend shape offset. Delete those. So I'll copy, paste, plug that in, paste, plug that in, paste, and Plug that in. At this point, we should probably save the scene as something. Um, that's what I called it before. Okay. And uh, okay, so we need to. This needs to drive the amounts of these. So let's have a look first of all where this, if we just look at the transform of this. Um, so that's the rotational value when it's just looking straight ahead, when nothing wants to be affected. Um, first of all, actually, I'm going to alter this. So this, instead of just having the degrees of all three, I want to be able to get these individual values. So I want to change that from a vector, which is, you know, three X, Y, and Z to actually those individual values. So I'll pump those out like that. That's a lot more useful. Z we're not using, but I might as well just keep it there for the moment because what we want to use is the, the X, which is the red one is up and down and the Y, the green one is left and right. So the Y is the one we want to use for this first look left shape. And let's see there the maximum value of the x. Sorry, the y. Sorry, <laughs> the y for looking left is 32 there and 3 when it's straight ahead. So we want to get the change the values from from when it's 3 is at 0 and when it's at 32 it's at full amount 1. So to do that, we need to change the range. And uh, again, you know, I know what these things are called. You just kind of, you just pick it up really by just playing around. Um, that's how you do it. So if I go into this change range from the start, so when it's at three, that from start and two starts. So three is at zero 
and 30, what was it? Let's go onto that frame. 32, let's say, 32, we can do the whole 0.224, but I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. And then that relates to this one to end, which is at one. So um, now this result, we should be able to multiply this vector by this result. And hopefully, unless I've done something that I don't really understand or silly, then that should work when I plug that into that and the eye rotates. So let's try it. Can't see anything, but let's have a look. No. <laughs> All right. That's interesting. Ah, <laughs> it's not interesting. Of course it's not going to work because I haven't hooked up that transform to anything. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's quite good to be able to see me acting like an idiot because, you know, I'm sure you'll all act like idiots when you do this at some point. So, okay, so the eyes transform, we need to hook up to the graph. So, got that transform there and we want to be able to hook up the matrix of this, not the world matrix, just the normal matrix, I think, just to that transform. Now we've got it hooked up to the eye. So the eye, yeah, okay, so you can see some movement there around the eye. Okay, so then it's a matter of doing the others. Oops, I don't know that. Um, let's have a look how, what the degrees are when it's left, when it's looking left. Okay, so when it's looking left, it's at uh, minus 25.6. So we want to grab one of these and one of those. Paste. So we still want the Y, but we want this output, not the other one. And we want to change this from start is 3 still, and it was minus 25.6 minus 25.6 and then plug that into there and hopefully that should work now when it's looking left yeah okay so we've got right and left don't worry about the shapes being a bit rubbish I just did this quickly as an example now the up and down is not working now the up and down is the red one which is the x-axis so again let's look at the values minus 27 and then went straight ahead it's minus 6 so minus 27, oops, well, let's say minus 28 for that one. Let's just save the scene. Oops, keep doing that. So what was it? Minus 27 and my, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have another look. So we plug that one in and the output there. And it was, oops, I keep double clicking on it, going from ice, that's what ice does. Minus 27 and the other end is minus 6. Okay, so we type those values in here. So minus 6 and minus 20 or 28, wasn't it? I think actually rather than 27, 27 point something. Now, why it's doing weird there, it's going up when I'm looking left, it's because I'm using the, I'm still using the x, uh, the y value instead of the x. So I need to change that input from there to here. And hopefully that'll work when it looks up. Yeah, there you go. And down, um, the value when it's looking down is three. So it goes from, no, sorry. Uh, it goes from minus six to 21. Okay, so let's do that. Let's copy that one. And before I forget, I'll just do that there. So minus 6 to 21, not minus 21. And I'll plug that value in there and that one there. Now, 
One thing about noodle trees is that the bigger they get, the more frightening they look and makes you go, oh, this is just too complicated. I don't want to do this. <clears throat> Which, you know, it, code looks complicated. I think more complicated than this. The point is that once you've made, once you've made that, you can kind of do that. And that's your eye looking left, right, up and down. Do control G and just, you know, it's, you can just call it something Right, hang on, let's just move that up. You can just call that something like I solver or something, and it looks a lot more simple, you know. Um, but basically, now we've got, you know, we've got eyes looking right, up, left, you know, left, right, up, and down. Let's see how much time we've got on here. I'm going to leave it there for this video. Um, and carry on with this in the next one where I'll do a blink override for this. So the cool thing about you know doing it nodally is that I can do blinks that override all of this stuff, all of the left, right and up and down. Or I can have another series of blinks that also um, show the left, right and up and down, uh, but they're when it's in a blink position and it's very easy to blend between one set and another set nodally because you're not looking at just individual values of blend shapes. You've got a tree, which you can pretty much do whatever you want with. But I'll show you that in the next video. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.